what, Noah? I bought my first Funko Pop. <laughs> These things are actually kind of cute. I can't believe I used to hate them. Ah! What the hell, man? That was my dog! Don't worry about him. I'm you from the future, and he'll chew up one of your favorite Funko Pops. But I only have one! That also reminds me, don't buy Funko Pops. You spend your small YouTube fortune on all of them when you're famous. I get YouTube famous? Really? Like, people stop me and want to take pictures? It's happened two or three times, but they always end up calling you fat Elon Musk. Well, you did get fatter. All right, enough bullying future Chris right here. I just came back to tell you, you need to watch Cobra Kai right now so you don't look like a bandwagon in 2020 when it's popular for everybody. I know you think the show is lame and it's not worth it, but trust me, it becomes one of your favorite shows of all time. That's all, I gotta go. Wait, is there anything else I should know about the future? No. Yes, like I just admitted right there in my cringy intro, I was one of the late bloomers to Cobra Kai because I honestly thought there was just no way you could make a spin-off TV show that's a sequel to the original Karate Kid, bring back all the old actors, make it focus on karate with a bunch of new tweens in high school, also the fact that it was on YouTube streaming service, and that's also coming from a guy who absolutely loved the original Karate Kid that grew up with those movies, watched them over and over, even if I didn't completely love the sequels that followed that first Karate Kid film, but thanks to Netflix and the online peer pressure for telling me to be ready for season 3 of Cobra Kai, cause man, it was so worth it. I mean, just look at my ridiculous getup, I went ahead and actually bought this, and I even went ahead and saw someone selling bonsai trees on the street, and I bought them, cause I'm that freaking into Cobra Kai! With season 3, we pick up right where we left off with season 2, Miguel in the hospital, wondering if he's gonna recover or not from the events of how it ended the big epic high school battle and the rest of the town having to deal with the aftermath. Now I'm not going to be giving any spoilers concerning season 3 that was one of the rules Netflix requested for me when they went ahead and let me see the show a week early. They said strike first, strike hard, no mercy and if you spoil Cobra Kai season 3 you're going to taste our Cobra and I really don't want to know what that means. One thing off the bat I want to go ahead and mention about Cobra Kai Season 3 is they pulled off a miracle and they were able to turn someone like me who did not absolutely love the sequels for the Karate Kid growing up, that is 2 and 3, and with this third season, they go ahead and do things that make you absolutely find a new appreciation for both the second movie and the third film. I'll say for Cobra Kai Season 3, it's probably more important that you go ahead and make sure you're just caught up with the first two movies because this third season season really does focus on events from the second film, but I did not expect everything that happened to feel so naturally and just progressive with the story that Cobra Kai has set up. The show in the third season also seems to find a much better balance between Daniel and Johnny where it's kind of even now the amount of screen time each character gets and the line is even more blurred on who is the main character at this point and also who is the villain. That is one of the brilliant things I love about Cobra Kai is there's no real clear cut villain. Villain. I know a lot of you could argue that John Kreese is the main or center villain for Cobra Kai, but again, they pull off a miracle where in season 3, they manage to add a lot of humanity to his character where you start to see it from his point of view, and for slight seconds, you root for the man and think, I kind of want him to get his way. I kind of want him to succeed after everything we're being told and are witnessing about his life. But one thing with season three that was starting to become a larger issue is now you're in a town where these kids have had several karate fights with each other over and over and you're thinking to yourself, okay, this has to become the town of Footloose where they ban karate once and for all and no one should be allowed to own a dojo in the valley. And again, while the season three addresses that, tries to go ahead and make the reality of that situation be heard, the show manages to find a workaround that makes sense, that completely goes with the story. The specific characters and plot points in season 3 that really made me happy is what they went ahead and did with Miguel's character. While I would like to complain a little bit that his recovery in the show went way faster than expected, to some parts not feeling all that believable, his personality and growth as a character is even more revealed here. Where maybe in the last season you were falling off the Miguel train, now you're right back on on it, rooting for this guy, wanting him to win, but the yin yang of this, they go ahead and kind of sideline Robbie for a lot of this season. Maybe it was just me, but I felt like Robbie was really underutilized this season. Throughout the trailers and stuff, you see that he starts to pay for the repercussions of his actions with season two. And while I really wanted to go ahead and focus more on his struggle, where his mind is at, how does he feel about himself? Does he still want to go ahead and take the Miyagi Do way of life, of being peaceful, of 
trying to make himself better or does everything crumbling around him gonna turn him to the dark side and because of that downsizing of his role it didn't feel that impactful by the end of the season to where we see where his characters left off i did love though the interactions between him and daniel and whether he still sees him as a sensei or he's completely dead to him speaking of characters go ahead and go through a progression in this show there is one character in particular that i don't want to go ahead and spoil but this particular person goes ahead and does a complete 180 by the end of the show and it does not feel earned it feels very out of nowhere this character has been very bashful rude angry and then just out of the blue seems to flip his personality around with not that much convincing to the audience in my opinion but speaking of other characters that i also can't go ahead and bring up and spoil for you guys there's this one surprise character that shows up in cobra kai season three that i was kind of dreading because they've been setting this person up for a while but they managed to pull off this person to a perfect T. They dedicate an entire episode around this individual and the meaning behind bringing in this character, how it manages to connect all the other movies and give you a newfound appreciation, not only for the first movie, for the entire series, Daniel and Johnny's art, was one of my favorite episodes of the entire third season. And it wouldn't also be an episode of Cobra Kai unless we talked a little bit about the action sequences. And I gotta admit, while there is plenty of action going on here, season three seems to have some of the weaker action-packed moments where a lot of the stuff feels more choreographed not as quick paced a little more sloppy where you don't completely believe some of the fight sequences going on and stuff that is supposed to look badass and cool is kind of just funny just because it looks a little goofy that's not to say there isn't any action or there isn't any cool sequences there is but compared to the last two seasons i would say this was on a weaker note but even with those nitpick minor gripes season three continues to prove that there is a lot more story to tell with these characters they have a much bigger plan in store for them and with the ending teaser finale for what is to come because they've already confirmed season four while it not might hit you as hard or as jaw dropping as the way season two ended just the curiosity in your mind of what the possibilities could hold and what they're planning to do for this next season is just really blowing my mind and keeping me a cobra kai fan to the fullest so while maybe my rating system doesn't completely work for tv shows i'm still gonna go ahead and give it a shot for you guys for cobra Cobra Kai season three. I'm going to go ahead and give action three stars. Like I said, a lot of action in here, but compared to some of the past seasons, it's a little more sloppy, not as clean cut. The choreography is a little off, but it still gets the job done. Comedy in season three. I'm going to give it three stars. The show manages to find a perfect balance of some of the more serious moments of bringing in a lot of humor. Every episode will get you chuckling here and there. I also love how they ride the line of almost seeming campy, but still seem to pull it off. Drama for season three of Cobra Kai. I'm give it four stars because the story really elevated it to another level it made me find a new appreciation for karate kid 2 a movie i was never that fond of but after the events of season three it makes me like the movie even more and want to go back and check it out far for season three i'm gonna give it one star there's a moment in particular where a character is in a bit of a rough patch and even though it wasn't to the level of miguel's accident in season two it still kind of shocked me that cobra kai went there and suspense for cobra kai season three i'm gonna go ahead and give it three stars suspense was well built a lot of great moments to keep you on the edge of your seat but they don't really seem to happen till the final couple episodes casual fans i'm gonna give this an a plus cinephiles i'm gonna give it an a minus and critically i'm gonna give it an a minus for cobra kai season three it gets the three c guarantee Really am loving what they're doing with this show and where they're deciding to take it. But I want to hear from you guys. Are you excited for season three? Do you have any thoughts, theories, predictions down below? Again, don't be forget to be subscribed. Hit that like button because we're going to talk all spoilers after the show comes out and some of the most WTF moments. But as always, my name is Chris. Take care.